Hi, I'm John, the banking systems engineer, poker systems engineer, and I've been called the MedPot engineer because of my battles to legalize what I consider the safest herb, medicinal herb, in mankind's history. So my battles have included court cases to help the people get different exemption conditions to challenging the existence of the law. And right now those challenges go under the name of Polcoa, P-O-L-C-O-A, because we don't accept that the Hidsig court brought the law back to life. After all, the other judges had said that getting it knocked down meant it was to be deemed repealed. While the Court of Appeals said only absent so we can fix it, which they can't do. So these defenses are going on. So if you don't appreciate how the banning of this important herb has hurt your economy and your health, and right now it's the time to get out there and make a noise about getting rid of the prohibition of this very wonderful substance because the fact it's never killed anybody is a major point that always negates all their stupid statistics. And the fact that it's good for so many other things is a major point that always belittles what super stupid statistics they ever come up with. So here is the final result of the battle for the legalization of marijuana that I participated in that resulted in my six years under government supervision. But it paid off. So there's a picture of me smoking a doobie on Parliament Hill when I went up there with seven pounds of marijuana, having announced I was bringing a pound to the Prime Minister, pound to the Justice Minister, pound to the Supreme Court across the street, pound to the Superior Court across the street, pound to the RCMP, pound to the OPP, and if they hadn't busted me by then, going home to smoke the last pound myself. Well, there's a picture of me being arrested by the RCMP on my first stop at the House of Commons door. But why would I do this? Well, what happened was I knew the law it was dead. This was in the two years. And there was now legislation to bring it back to life. Come being introduced in Parliament the very next day. So I knew that once they reintroduced the new legislation, my argument that the old legislation has been dead since Terry Parker, I'd have to start all over. So, because I'm known as a politician in Ottawa, I went on Parliament Hill with the seven pounds to hopefully freak out Parliament. And there you can see Member of Parliament Eugène Belmont, who ran against me in the Ottawa area. And he probably ran inside and told John Critchie and Terminals at the door being busted with a life sentence to apply marijuana. And he's mad, we better call off this new legislation. And there it is Ottawa holds back marijuana bill. Somehow or other, it paid off. They're holding it back to try and reintroduce it next week, they said. And then Parliament died, and there's never been the reintroducement of a new legislation. So that Polkoa still applies. The law's been struck down by the courts. Parliament never brought back a new one. And all of these convictions for the last seven years, these bogus convictions, including the two years where they admitted the law was dead, well, it's been dead for the last five years, too. And they got a lot of explaining to do. So why would I do this? Well, because the prohibition of marijuana, the world's greatest medicinal herb, is genocide of the sick. And just as usury interest on money that forces poor people to fight over not enough money is genocide of the poor, this is another major genocide I chose to fight. Example. The Epilepsy Canada site had statistics that in Canada, 10 people a day were dying of epilepsy. Multiply by 200 for the world. So 10 people a day were dying of epilepsy, and four of them knew they were epileptic because they'd already had seizures. Now, Terry Parker proved in 2000 that marijuana stopped epileptic seizures. Okay, then Marilyn Chamney, another one of our people, same thing, from dozens and dozens of epileptic seizures a week to zero with marijuana, the greatest herb to prevent seizures ever. Perfect fit for the DNA, I suppose. So anyway, that means that those four people were carrying around a joint with them. It means that, like Terry Parker, who could, who could at the time carry a joint around, feel a seizure coming on that aura, you pull out your marijuana joint and you fix it. And that means that four epileptics a day are dying, who don't have to be dying because of a prohibition against them carrying around their medicine. 
And that's why in all our arguments, we keep arguing the genocide laws. The fact that the not prohibition not only goes after the sick people by denying them the best medicine for their ailment, but the healthy people by denying us the best medicine to stay healthy. So anyway, that's why I fight my number two fight in politics is the legalization of marijuana. Actually, all drugs. Cops shouldn't be chasing people with habits. They should be chasing criminals. So anyway, Lincoln called it stupid to be doing prohibitions on people's tastes. And what happened was this. After being railroaded through the system, facing a life sentence, pot protest earns fine and probation Ottawa Sun, Thursday, March 30th, 2006. And the only reason I got off light was because there was a by-election I was in in Ottawa coming up the next day, and putting me in jail would have probably made too much news. So I got off, I think. Anyway, three years ago, John Turmel dared the Crown to prosecute him for carrying seven pounds of marijuana to Parliament Hill and lighting a doobie in protest of what he said were unjust prosecutions. Remember, I knew the law was dead at this point. They didn't admit it for another six months. Uh, four months. That prosecution came to an end yesterday with Termel being sentenced to three years probation and fined a thousand for possession for the purpose of trafficking. Now, the point is, the possession law was dead, but they said, well, possession for the purpose is a different offense, so you're going to be guilty of that. And so I'm convicted of possession for the purpose of trafficking at a prime minister, justice minister, Supreme Court's. And find a thousand dollars. Okay, term out the Guinness record holder for the most elections contested and lost. Was also ordered to perform a hundred hours community service by Justice Paul Benarger. My accordion concerts, long since done. Waiting cops on May 14, 2003, Termal faxed the manifesto to Crown Attorneys all on my blog, declaring his intention to bring a bag full of pot to the hill and share it with politicians. The RCMP were waiting for him. Termel said yesterday he was trying to expose the fact people were being convicted for possession of drugs when the law governing possession had been declared of no force and effect by the Ontario Superior Court judge. No, the Ontario Court of Appeal, and I was right. And people were being busted wrongly. In a written decision issued March 10, Binaji ruled the decision did not extend to possession for the purpose of trafficking. I should have gone on the hill with just 30 grams, you know, then I would have beat it too. But I wanted to prove it, and it was all the laws affected by this declaration of invalidity. Sought discharge. We live in a democracy where protest and dissent are not only allowed, but in many quarters encouraged. However, that does not extend to deliberate breaking of criminal legislation. And Blackstone said, if you disagree with the law, break it and take the consequences, which I've done many times. Termel had asked for an absolute discharge so that he could, wouldn't have a blot on his criminal record that might interfere with international travel and for his ambition to one day run for Prime Minister of the Planet, which I can only do by internet now. His request was denied, so I now have a big criminal record for the possession of, for the purpose of trafficking of enough for a life sentence, so you won't see me traveling around the globe too much. Next up for Termel is today's provincial by-election in the Pien Carlton, where he's running as an independent candidate. Whew, I really thought the judge was going to put the boots to me and put me in jail. Ottawa citizen Tony LaFaro, same day marijuana advocate loses case, hit with fine. Lousy picture of me smoking my doobie. They had a better one available. Termel is independent candidate in today's Nepean Carlton vote. John Termel fought Canada's marijuana law in court yesterday and law won. Mr. Termel, a professional gambler and medicinal marijuana advocate, was fined a thousand bucks, given three years probation, and told to perform a hundred dollars community service after he was found guilty of a 2003 offense of possession marijuana for the purpose of trafficking. To the Prime Minister, remember that. The independent candidate in today's Nepean Carlton by-election said he plans to appeal Ontario Court Justice Paul Binaji's decision. He said the reason he went to Parliament Hill to deliver three kilograms of marijuana to the former Prime Minister Don Chrétien in 2003 was to make a political statement about the need to decriminalize the country's marijuana laws. No! I'd gone to say that the laws had been dead for the last year and a half and stopped busting people, and it took a few more months to get him to admit it and stop busting people. Well, actually, let him go, but then stop start again because the court resurrected the law the day that they declared that I'd been right all along. But yesterday the flamboyant poker player and perennial political candidate was just happy he wasn't headed to jail. And I was. I thought he was going to do a number on me. 
If I lose the appeal, I'll have to pay, but if I didn't want to go to jail, that's what's worried me, the 55-year-old said after being found guilty of the charge. Mr. Tamel, who lives in Brantford across the street from the casino where he plays poker, said the judge believed his motive in 2003 was just to make a political statement about Canada's marijuana laws, that they were dead enough for me to walk on the hill with seven pounds. I just wanted to prove that the possession law was still dead, and I was proven right. They dropped the possession charges against 4,000 people, so I did stop the courts from enforcing an invalid law. Federal Crown Attorney Allison Ratsoy said Mr. Turmel's case took nearly three years to come to trial because he brought a series of motions through the courts challenging the constitutionality of the marijuana laws. I'd call him an activist, not a nuisance. He has every right to voice his protest, but just, just not in the manner that he did. Anyway, so that's the end result. I did my time, and uh, I'll be off the hook next March after six years under the government's thumb, but I did manage to get 4,000 people off the hook. That's the minimum number, and a lot more on the way.